Clint Arthurlow, John LeMessurier, and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> Is There Honey Still for Tea? Featuring John Laurie, Arnold Ridley, and Ian Lavender with this week's guests, Joan Cooper and Fraser Carr. Here is the news, and this is John Snag reading it. By August 1942, the war is not going too well for Britain and her allies. The Eighth Army once again is in retreat in North Africa. In the Atlantic, U-boats continue to take an appalling toll of merchant shipping. On the Russian front, the devastation of Stalingrad has begun, while closer to home, the Allied raid on Dieppe is repulsed with heavy losses. Despite these setbacks, life goes on. And at Swallows Bank in Warmington-on-Sea, Sergeant Wilson and Private Pike are hard at work in the manager's office. No. Oh, dear, dear. Oh, dear. Hmm. What's the matter, Uncle Arthur? Huh? Oh, aren't you feeling very well? What? Well, uh, got a bit of a, a bit of a headache, that's all. Oh. Frank, you're making an awful noise with that pen. Oh, I've got to interrupt the ledger, haven't I? Yes. Now, fussy Mr. Manry needs. Yes, yes, I know, no, but, but, but can't you do it a bit more quietly? I mean, you, you use another nib or something. It's the only nib I've got. Hmm? <laughs> They're very difficult to get. There is a war on, you know. Yes, I know. Anyhow, if you find a day, it's your own fault. Hmm? By the time we finish supper, it's always so late, you never leave our house until I've gone to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're back early for breakfast before I'm awake. <laughs> All right, Frank, you know, I, I have to come round to your house for all my meals, you know. You see, your mother keeps my ration book. I know. I know that. But what I can't understand is I never hear you leave and I never hear you come back in the morning. <laughs> well, I let myself in and out very quietly. You don't do anything else very quietly. <laughs> Frank, would you just stop it, please? Just, just, just deep quiet and stop it. Stop it, would you please? Do you know your trouble, Uncle Arthur? You're not getting enough sleep. <laughs> well, tonight, I'm not going to bed until you've gone home. I shall just push you out the door myself if I have to. After all, it's for your own good. Yes, all right, but thank you very much. It's very thoughtful of you. Right, right, my man, just to br bring it in here. Uh, right, you are, Governor. Morning, Frank. Morning, uh, morning, Miss Manning. Yeah. <clears throat> good heavens. <laughs> what on earth have you got there, sir? This, Wilson, is the new door for my office. Oh, really? <laughs> mm, how awfully nice. <laughs> Do you realise that it's three months since this bank was bombed? I can't tell you how many applications I've put in for a new door. Confounded red tape. Pass, pass me my nameplate, Pike. Would you? It's under the desk. Yes, Mr. Manry. Here you are. Thank you. Look at that, Wilson. Mm. My name in gleaming gold letters. <laughs> it's very impressive, sir. I can't wait to see it back in its rightful place on my office door. Yes, it, it's rather a plain door, isn't it? This isn't the actual door, Wilson. Ah. No, 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 no. This is just, just the wrapping paper they put round it to protect the panelling. Oh, I see. <laughs> I mean, they'd hardly give me, the manager of the bank, a door made of paper. <laughs> <laughs> Do use your intelligence, Wilson. Right, my man, you can take the paper wrapping off. Uh, what paper wrapping? This is the door. The do <laughs> it's made of paper. Oh, that's right. Tar paper, to be exact. Standard government issue to replace doors in bombed offices. I can't screw my nameplate to a door made of paper. You could stick it on. <laughs> Be quiet, Pike. Get back to your counter. Yes, sir. This is monstrous. I shall complain to head office. Oh, there's no use going on at me, Governor. Now, do you want me to hang it or not? Oh, very well, yes, yes. Get on with it. All right, you are. It won't take a second. Wilson. Sir? How am I supposed to, to see important clients in an office with a paper door? Yeah, well, they have paper doors in Japan. What's that got to do with it? Well, I've really no idea. <coughs> well, how are people going to knock on it? Well, you could put up a notice saying, don't knock, cough. <laughs> I'm not having people coughing and splutter outside my door. D just a minute. I say, yeah. I say you. Yeah? That door's got holes in it. Oh, don't you worry, Governor, I'll soon fix that. Um... Got any stamp paper, Sonny? Yeah, of course. Hold on. Hang on. I'll, I'll test them up for you. Here you are. <laughs> Tom. Now, I'll just give it a lick. I'll stick a bit here and a bit there. Well, there you are, Governor. As good as new. I can't have white spots all over my door. <laughs> Blimey, you're a fussy little beggar, aren't you? <laughs> hey, 
Perhaps if we stuck stamps all over the holes instead, you could have all different colours, couldn't you? Hi. Yeah? Stop being silly. <laughs> I thought I told you to get back to your counter. Yes, Mr. Manley. Right, Governor, your door's fixed, so I'll be off now. Very well. And close it behind you, will you? Right you are. You know, sir, in an odd sort of way, that door looks quite attractive. Nothing attractive about it. Hmm? Looks a mess. Excuse me, Mr. Manreen. Yes, what is it, Pike? Uh, Colonel's here to see you. Ask him to come in, will you? Yes, Mr. Manreen. Mr. Manning, we'll see you now. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, good morning, Mannering, uh, Wilson. Good morning, sir. Good morning, morning. sir. Uh, I must say I like your new door. Uh, Japanese style, isn't it? <coughs> <laughs> it looks most attractive. I like a man who's not afraid to be adventurous with his decor. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I always say, one must move for the times. Thanks. <laughs> I'm sorry to barge in like this, but I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. It's about Mr. Godfrey. Uh, he lives at Cherry Tree Cottage, doesn't he? That's right. Yes, yes. it is. Yes, yes, yes. It's a lovely little place. This roof, white fence, a garden full of hollyhocks and roses. Just like a picture on a chocolate box, you know. <laughs> Whenever I pass that lovely little cottage, I stop and I say to myself, well, there it is. This is what we're fighting for. Well, I do. <laughs> I couldn't have put it better myself, we'll say. Uh, yes, it is what we're fighting for. But unfortunately, it's got to come down. Come down? Yes. A new fighter aerodrome is being built. And Godfrey's cottage will be right in the middle of it. Well, can't anything be done? Oh, no, I'm afraid not. It's vital for the war effort. He'll get compensation, of course. But I thought it might be better if you were to tell him yourself. He won't get such a shock when he gets the official notice. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. Cheerio. Right, sir. What are we going to do, Wilson? I don't know, sir. I mean, Godfrey and his sister have lived in that cottage for donkey's years. I mean, I think he was even born there. Yeah. Well, how on earth am I going to tell him? Better get Jones and Fraser over here. Right. Pike! Pike! Coming, Mr. Manreen. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> Mr. Manreen. <laughs> Door handles come off. I can't get in. <laughs> Come in and stop fooling about, boy. But the handles come off. And I said come in. Oh, very well. Pike, how dare you put your arm through my door? Well, the handles come off on my side, so I've got to reach through to turn yours, see? There we are. But you, you've torn a great hole in the door. It's not my fault if they give you a paper door with rotten handles that come off, is it? Don't give your own voice to me, boy. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. <laughs> I run across the road. Get Jones and Fraser here at the double. Yes, Mr. Manning. Just look at that door, Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> Not been up ten minutes. It's already in ruins. Yes, well, nothing's made to last these days, is it? it should have lasted more than ten minutes. <laughs> now, what about Godfrey? If only I could do something to help him. I feel this very deeply, you know, Wilson, very deeply. Yes. Well, then why don't you lend him the money to buy another cottage? Ah. <clears throat> I'm afraid I can't allow my personal feelings to interfere with my position as bank manager. <laughs> Miss Manry. Yep. Excuse me, Mr. Manry. Pike. Don't stick your head through the door like that. You're making the... You're making the hole worse. Well, what else can I do? Go oh, use your head, boy. I did. That'll do. <laughs> Now, what is it? Mr. Jones and Mr. Fraser are here, sir. Why don't you say so? Morning, Mr. Manrin. Did you want to see us? Now, just a minute, Jones. I'll open the door. It's a bit... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> handles come off on this side now. <laughs> the handles come off, Jones. Don't worry, Mr. Manrin. I'll put my shoulder to it. Oh, I wouldn't do that Don't if I were you. No, no, no. It's, it's only made of... Hey! Hey! <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Manrin. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that ever since I was a lad. It was just like in a circus, Mr. Jones, when the acrobats jumped through the paper hoops. <laughs> yeah, well, we're certainly not short of clowns. <laughs> Send the other one in. You can come through now, Mr. Fraser. I've made an opening. Oh, hey! <laughs> Look what you've done. You've absolutely ruined my door. Oh, sorry about that, Mr. Mann. I tell you what, I've got some old mutton cloth in my shop. 
<laughs> We've just patched it up with that. Mind you, it's a bit bloodstained. No, thank no, thank <laughs> uh, I've got an old road might do that right. <laughs> I don't think so, thank you, Fraser. Oh, suit yourself. None of my customers have ever complained before. <laughs> I've asked you both along here this morning because I've had some rather disturbing news about Godfrey. Have well, you been after Mrs. Prentice again? No, no. no. <laughs> Nothing like that at all. Apparently, they're going to build a new aerodrome, and Godfrey's cottage has got to come down to make way for it. And the Colonel has asked me to break the news. They can't do that to poor Mr. Godfrey. Ah, at his age, the shock could quite easily kill him. And you'll be responsible. <laughs> Did you hear what I said, Mr. Mannering? You will be responsible. Yes, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Answer that, Wilson, will you? All right, sir. Hello? Uh, Swallow's back. Yeah, yes. Hello? Oh, Raymond, yes. Yes. What? Look, can, can we get on, please? Yeah. Now, Jones, Fraser, the situation is... Yeah, well, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll tell him, Raymond, I'll tell him. Excuse me, sir. Uh, uh, Jones, your, your, your boy Raymond says that Fraser's boy, Heathcliff, <laughs> Turned him very rudely to move the offal queue away from the front of Fraser's funeral parlour. Is that true, Mr. Fraser? Uh huh. I told him to get him shifted. How dare you interfere with my offal queue? They have no right to queue up in front of my premises. I don't want a lot of fat women gawking in at my window arguing about their points. <laughs> my offal queue doesn't want to look in your rotten window. It's only got an old iron and a bit of old velvet in it. It's better than your window. All you've got is two plaster pigs with stupid expressions on their faces. <laughs> My fault, I can't get any meat. Look, 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 Jones, Fraser. We're all very busy, so will you please just give me your attention for two minutes? As I said, the Colonel has asked me to tell Godfrey, but I, I feel, well, that is, uh, Sergeant Wilson, I feel it, it might be better if you, Jones, or you, Fraser, I told him. After all, you're both his contemporaries. Uh huh. What do you mean as you're trying to wriggle out of it? Mr. Manning, <laughs> Mr. Manning is not trying to wriggle out of it. May I remind you that Mr. Manning is not only a bank manager, he's also our commanding officer and a gentleman. And further. Wait a minute. Mr. Fraser, those two little plaster pigs in my window haven't got stupid expressions on their faces. They've got happy laughing faces. I don't know. I... Stupid man. Just a minute. Just... Wilson, Wilson, it's no good. You and I are just going to have to go to Godfrey's cottage tomorrow afternoon and tell him. Well, very well, sir. We shall have to be diplomatic, of course. We mustn't rush in. We shall have to pick the right moment to tell Godfrey. Well, how will we know when that moment is? Hey, hey, in that film, Dangerous Moonlight. Oh. <laughs> you see, Anton Warbrook had to tell his girlfriend that he was leaving Poland forever. So he played the piano to take her mind off it. Uncle Arthur could do that. He plays the piano very well. I don't think that's very appropriate. Right. <laughs> Godfrey's tone deaf anyway. <laughs> no, on reflection, I think we shall just have to go in there, take the bull by the horns, and grasp the nettle. <laughs> there aren't any nettles in Mr. Godfrey's oh. garden. <laughs> and he certainly never let bulls get in and tear off all his lovely flowers. Aren't those roses beautiful? Yes, aren't they? Hello, Mr. Manley. Uh, Mr. Wilson. Frank. Afternoon, Mr. Godfrey. Mr. Manley's got something to tell you. Be quiet, be quiet. <laughs> well, aren't you going to grasp the nettle? I said be quiet. Just passing, Godfrey. Thought we'd stop and say hello. How often nice of you, sir. You, you're just in time to join us for tea. Uh, uh, Sissy. Yes, Charles, dear? Uh, look who's dropped in for tea. Oh, how very nice. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Afternoon, Mr. Oh, Gray. We should need some more chairs, is it? Oh, yes. Well, you talk to your friend, Charles. I'll go and get them. Frank said you were going to tell me something, Mr. Manley. Uh, what is it? Uh, ah, well, yes, I was, uh, <clears throat> I was going to tell you, Godfrey, that... Uh, that, uh, that about the... I don't think I've ever seen such beautiful roses. <laughs> they are lovely, aren't they? As you know, this rose bush was planted by my father over 50 years ago. Mm. Tell him quickly and then we can go. <laughs> Can't go now. We've been asked to stay for tea. You know, I often say to my sister, it doesn't matter what Hitler does, this cottage and this garden with its beautiful roses will always be here. It's what we're fighting for, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, of course it has got Tea is ready. Uh, come along. Let's go and have tea. Mr. Manreen, are you going to tell Mr. Godfrey now or during tea? <laughs> during tea. Huh? Huh? Now, come and sit down, everyone. Uh, will you sit there, Mr. Wilson? Well, thank you so much. Mr. Manreen, shall I sit next to Mr. Godfrey in case he faints when you tell him? <laughs> Be 
quiet, boy, and sit down. Yes, Mr. Manwing. Milk, everyone? Yes, please, Miss Godfrey. Thank, Thank you. you. I hope you like this tea. It's made with water from our own well. That's what made it taste so special. Uh, bread and butter, Frank? Oh, thank you, Mr. Godfrey, yes. <laughs> That's right, Frank. You tuck in. Try some honey. We've got plenty. Oh, I'd love some, yes. Thank you. Mm. Uh, mm. Mr. Manning. <laughs> bread and butter? No, 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 thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm not really hungry. Oh, Mr. Mannering, you must have one of my upside-down cakes. Oh, oh yes, 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 of course. Uh, thank you. I, it, does, it does look nice. You've got it upside-down. <laughs> <laughs> How very silly of me. I must say, this, uh, this bread and honey is simply delicious. <laughs> this bread is baked in our old brick oven. That's what gives it that lovely, crusty taste. And the honey comes from our own bees. They thrive on our flowers. You know, we're almost self-sufficient here. This cottage and garden give us all we need. Mr. Manreen. <laughs> Are you going to tell him now? It is during tea. After tea, Pike. Huh? huh? More, more bread and butter. <laughs> more bread and butter, anyone? Or, yeah. or cake? Uh... Uh, no, thank you. No, I, I, I couldn't eat another thing. That, uh, that upside-down cake was delicious. More tea, Mr. Wilson? Well, uh, uh, perhaps just half a cup. Oh, please. yes. Right you are. Thank you. Very much, thank you so much. There you are, then. Thank you. It's awfully nice, you know, the way, isn't it? The sun brings out the lovely red colour on those bricks. <laughs> yes, isn't it? Uh, Don't you think? The whole place is a sense of permanence. Uh, my sister and I always say that this cottage stands for England, don't we? Yes, we do, Charles. <laughs> Mr. Manwin, it's after tea. You can't wait any longer. You've got to tell him. <laughs> yes, you're right, Pike. Uh, Godfrey? Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Manwin? The fact is, Godfrey... The fact is that uh, I... Uh, Wilson has something to say to you. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, I can't... Uh, get, I can't... Get, get on with it, Wilson. That's an order. Uh, yes, Mr. Wilson? Uh, what is it that you're going to say? Oh, Lord, well, I... I don't... Uh, do, uh, do, you think I, do you think I might try one of those upside-down cakes? Lay, Roy. Lay, Roy. Lay, Roy. Lay, Roy. Oh! I think that's far enough away from the guard hut. Now then, Judy, what's all this about, son? Well, you see, Jock, Mr. Manning went round to Mr. Godfrey's on Saturday afternoon to tell him about the new aerodrome. Uh -huh. As Mr. Godfrey's sister was there, he thought the shock would be too much for her, and I quite agree with him. I told him I thought it'd be better if Mr. Godfrey was alone when we told him. When we told him? Yes. And Mr. Manley was very grateful for my advice. He said he'd give us a couple of minutes out here, and then he'd send Mr. Godfrey along with our flask of tea. Ah, uh, man, if you've got enough sense to see that Manning has left us holding the baby. That's not fair, you know. It's not fair. Mr. Manning thought that as senior members of the platoon, it'd be more tactful coming from us. Ah. You will back me up, won't you? Well, how very well, then. I'll maneuver the conversation in that direction for you. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Jones, Mr. Fraser? Oh, I like Mr. Godfrey. What brings you out here? Well, Mr. Manning thought you might like a nice hot cup of tea, and he asked me to bring it out personally. Well, that's very nice. That's nice of you. Come on, Jock, we'd better get it over with and done with. You start to manure the conversation round. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, Godfrey, son, Jones are here has some bad news for you. <laughs> How was that, Jonesy? Hold it. Well, uh, stay. I'm going on patrol now. No, no, no. Don't leave me, Jock. Sorry, Jonesy. The war comes fast. Anyway, I've only got as far as your telephone box. Cheerio, boy. Cheerio. <laughs> what did Mr. Fraser mean about bad news? What? Who? Oh. Well, well, then, Mum, we'll, we'll come to that in a minute. Let's enjoy a nice cup of tea first, shall we? All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> there you are, Mr. Jones. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the cup of cheers, eh? <laughs> Well, now, Mr. Godfrey, the point is, at a time like this, we're all fighting for our lives, our very existence, even. And we've all got to make sacrifices. Oh, yeah, yes, I know. I, I gave up taking sugar in my tea some months ago. <laughs> there you are, you see. Now, take Mr. Manning, for instance. He's got to make sacrifices. They've given him a paper door. Fancy a man of his status having to sit in an office with a paper door. And what's worse, I torn it. <laughs> it's the same with houses. I mean, if some highly important person comes along, all nonchalant like, and says to me, I've got to knock down your house for the war effort. I've got to let him do it. Oh, dear, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, they're going to knock yours down as well, are they? No, they're not going to knock my house down. Wait a minute. 
What do you mean as well? As well as my place. You mean you know? Oh, yes, we were told officially yesterday. I was going to speak to Mr. Mannering about it, but I didn't want to upset him. <laughs> <laughs> you know how easily he gets upset. Hello? Is that Sir Charles? Aye, it is. Sir Charles Renfrew McAllister, away in London? Aye, speaking. Good. My name's Fraser. James Fraser. What the hell do you think you're doing ringing me up in the middle of the night? It's quiet. It's peaceful. <laughs> and it's cheaper. <laughs> It still cost me a whole shilling just for three minutes. Now, look here. What do you want? Tell me. Are you the minister in charge of building a new aerodrome at Warmington on the sea? Now, look. If you're after a building contract, there's nothing doing. That's it. No, that man. No, no. D what do you want, then? I just want you to shift the aerodrome a wee bit. Shift it? Are you mad? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You've just only got your knighthood, have you not? Eh, huh? uh, well, what's that got with it? Well... I was reading in the papers that you come from a very old Scottish family, one that can trace its origins way back to Robert the Bruce. You surely haven't woken me up to discuss my ancestors. No, no, I've woken me up to ask you this. You couldn't have possibly be the laddie of the same name whose father used to keep the fish and chip shop in the wild and lonely Isla Barra. No, um... <laughs> Who was expelled from school for cheating. <laughs> Who got that bonny wee thing, Jenny McTavish, into trouble? <laughs> and who got the sack from the draper shop in the high street for getting his fingers caught in the till? <laughs> that wouldn't it be you, would it? <laughs> uh, 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 most certainly not. Oh, that's all right. And in that case, you'll not object to me telling the whole story to a certain society magazine. Take a hey, look, man. I've got the number right here in front of me. Is everyone here? Yeah. More or less, I think so, yes. I've got my van outside, sir, ready to drive Mr. Godfrey's cottage. Well done, Jones. Poor old Mr. Godfrey. I feel ever so sorry for him and his sister having to move out. Yes, Pike. It's a sad day. War can be very cruel, you know, Pikey. Well, at least we can all go and help him load his belongings. Yes, but it's small enough just to heaven knows. Yeah. I wrote to the minister in charge of building the aerodrome, pointing out all the facts. I never even got a reply. <laughs> I'm afraid we're all in the hands of these petty bureaucrats, these faceless men of Whitehall. we better get going. Oh, hold on! Hold on, got money. Hold on! What is it, Fraser? They're going to move the aerodrome. They're what? Oh, I said they're going to move the aerodrome. Are you sure? Oh, hey, I just bumped into a friend of mine, Mr. Blackwell. You know, he, he works in the town clerk's office. Mm -hmm. He told me. So poor old Mr. Godfrey won't have to get over his home after all. It looks like it, Josie. By Jim, this is good news. My letter to the minister must have bought fruit after all. Oh. <laughs> well, where are they going to build the airfield then, Mr. Well, they're going to move the whole thing 200 yards further north. Well, the Godfrey's cottage won't be in the middle. No. Uh, no. Uh, just uh, on the edge. So, once again, British fair play has triumphed. Well, it certainly looks like it, sir, yes. An Englishman's home is his castle, sir. Must never forget that. Liberty of the individual is sacred. This is what we're fighting for. To preserve all that's good and decent. So that the generations that follow may live in peace. Come along, everybody. Eat up. Thank you, Mum. Some more bread honey, Frank, dear. Oh, yes, please, Miss Godfrey. Thank you. I must say, Godfrey, this is awfully nice, you know. Rather different from the last time we all had tea with you. Uh, yes, isn't it? Mr. Mannering couldn't make up his mind how on earth he was going to break the needle steel. Uh -huh. Quite so, Wilson. You know, I'm more than ever convinced that it must have been my letter to the minister that finally got the whole thing sorted out. Oh, no doubt about that, Mr. Manning. No doubt. <laughs> what was his name again? Sir Charles Renfrew McAllister, a fine, upstanding man. <laughs> I do say he can trace his answers to right back to Robert the Bruce. Really? Yeah. Uh, Sissy and I are very grateful, Mr. Manning. If it hadn't been for you, our peaceful little world would have come to an end. Yes. Dear Mr. Mannering, we owe it all to you. What's that? Oh, don't worry, Mr. Mannering. It's up to the aeroplanes taking off. And Sissy and I got quite used to them. If you could all keep a grip on your cups and saucers, I'll hang on to the 
table. Uh, Mr. Wilson, if you could hold the meringue down. Listen, you watch the tea box. Frank, get hold the house box. Lord, Godfrey. Thank goodness that's over. How on earth did you put up with that terrible noise? Oh, Sissy, I quite enjoy it, really. It makes us both feel closer to the war effort. Does it? A bit too close for my liking. <laughs> Mind you, the only drawback is that it does tend to curdle the milk. <laughs> Look out, everybody. Here comes the second wave. Hold on, everyone. Hold on. That episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LaMesher as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Lardy, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Joan Cooper, Sissy, and Fraser Carr as the Colonel and Sir Charles. Is There Any Honey Still for Tea was adapted for radio by Michael Knowles and Harold Snowd and produced by John Dial.